Hi, my name is Vincent, and today I want to show you all how to determine values that will make a piecewise function continuous everywhere. So for this question, we have g of x, and we want to find the value of the constant a that will make g of x continuous everywhere. Now, the only place we could run into trouble for this function g of x is when it switches from one piece to another. So the problem could occur at x equals 0. So what we need to be true for this to be continuous everywhere is we need the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x to be equal to g of 0. This just comes from the textbook definition of continuity. So we'll go piece by piece. First we have to say, well, what is the limit as x approaches 0 of our function g of x? Well, if we want this to be continuous, what we're going to go with here is the top piece of the function. Because if I replace x with 0 on bottom, I'm only getting the value a here. So to get a true limit, we're going to use the top piece. So we're going to replace g of x for the limit as x approaches 0 with 4 sine x over x. Because whatever the limit is for the left side and the right side, they have to match for the limit to exist. So now we evaluate this limit. We could factor out the constant 4. And now when we write our limit, you should recognize the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. If you don't know that identity, you could also use L'Hopital's rule here. But we could just say it's the constant 4 times the limit 1. So the limit as x approaches 0 must be equal to 4. Now, this is not necessarily our true answer, but it's like one piece to get us our answer. So now, next, we said that the limit needs to be equal to g of 0. So the next thing we should find out is what is g of 0? And if we replace the variable x with 0, we're going to use the bottom component here because g of 0 is determined by the interval that includes 0 down here. So g of 0 is equal to a minus 2 times 0, which is equal to a. So if we need this function to be continuous everywhere, that means g of 0, which is equal to a, has to be equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of our function, which is 4 which tells us the missing value of a is 4. So we have a equals 4 for the first question. All right, for this question here, uh, I'm going to show you all two ways to solve this. But my favorite way of doing this kind of question is I would sketch this first to get an idea of what we're trying to find. So if we look at a partial sketch of f of x, f of x in the beginning, if we look at the part in red, is the equation y equals 2 when x is less than or equal to negative 1. So this part here represents the first part of the function. And the last part of the function here, which we'll color in green, y equals negative 2, occurs when x is greater than or equal to 3. So we have to think about uh, this middle piece. This middle piece is linear. The reason why we know it's linear is because it's in the form uh, a constant times x plus another constant. Usually it's mx plus b, but in this case they used a. So if you think about it, if we want this function to be continuous everywhere and the middle piece is linear, what we need to happen is for this red point here to connect exactly to this green point. So essentially like a creative way of solving this problem would be to write the equation of a line that passes through this point and the coordinates here are negative 1, 2 and this point, which is 3, negative 2. So if we go ahead and do that, so we have those two points, the slope between them, we would have 2 minus negative 2 divided by negative 1 minus 3. So the slope in this case is 4 divided by negative 4, which is equal to negative 1. So this just told us the value for a because the slope of the line is negative 1, and that's the coefficient of x when we're in this form here. But then if I want to find out the value of my y-intercept, it looks like it's 1. But if I really want to be 100% certain what my y-intercept is, and remember, the a term is our slope, and the b term is our y-intercept, to be 100% certain, I could use the point-slope form equation to write the equation of a line, and I could identify the y-intercept from this. So if we look here, uh, let's say I call this my x1, y1. Then I have y minus 2, 
equals the slope is negative 1 times x minus negative 1, which will change to x plus 1. So then as we work this out, we have negative x minus 1. And when I solve for y, I have negative x plus 2, which this represents my y-intercept. So my two values, my slope, in this case is modeled by a, is negative 1. And my y-intercept, in this case, whoops, hang on a second, negative 2 plus 1. I'm adding 1 to both sides. Let's just fix that. A little slight mistake, but we caught it. So negative 2, we're adding 2 on both sides, and we're going to have plus 1 at the end. So uh, plus 2 here, and plus 2 on the right gives us negative x plus 1, which tells us our y-intercept is positive 1. But this just shows you, let's say you make a, you know, a slight mistake like this in the middle of a question. Sometimes like you know, drawing it out can really help you know uh, what neighborhood your answer has to be in. So you know, in case you make a small computational mistake, you catch it by the end. Now for a second method to solve this question, uh, the, this could use, uh, the method we'll use here is a lot like what we did in the first question. And the idea is the only problems that could pop up, if they are gonna pop up, are gonna occur when this function switches from this linear piece, which is a horizontal line, to a line with a slope. So it could, the problem could happen at negative one, and the second problem could happen when x equals three. So what we need to happen for this to be continuous everywhere is for one, we need this function to be continuous at negative one, which tells us by definition, that means the limit as x approaches negative one of f of x has to equal f of negative one. Now f of negative one, we get by just plugging into the top piece where x can equal negative one and it's equal to two. But now for the limit as x approaches negative one, we look at the middle piece and all we do is to find this limit, we replace x with negative one, which gives us a times negative one plus b. So in a moment, we're going to need this particular piece to help us solve the question. Now, we also need this function to be continuous at x equals three when it transitions from the middle piece to the last piece. And by definition, for it to be continuous at x equals three, we need the limit as x approaches three of f of x to equal f of three. Now, f of three we get from the bottom component. f of three is just equal to negative two. But to get the limit, here, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x, we could just plug in x equals 3 to the middle piece, and we get 3 times a plus b. So this is the second equation we can come up with. So then if we want to solve for a and b, we're going to set up a system of equations here. So what we have is we have 3a plus b equals negative 2, and we also have negative a plus b is equal to positive 2. Now we could uh, get these to cancel out by elimination if we multiply the bottom row by negative one. So the next line is gonna read three a plus b equals negative two. And then if we just negate everything, we're gonna have a minus b equals negative two. So then to get this to work out, we're gonna add these two equations. We have three a plus a is four a. b plus negative b cancels out. And then negative two plus negative two is negative four which tells us that a is equal to negative one. To solve for b, we could plug into any of these equations. Let's say we plug into this one. So we're gonna have a times negative one, which gives us negative one times negative one, plus b is equal to two. So now we have one plus b equals two, telling us that b is equal to one. So this is a second method of solving the same question. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on determining values that will make a function continuous. If you found it helpful, please click like and subscribe below. And if you have any requests, leave it in the comments section. Thank you all for watching.